What's going on, guys? Welcome to an episode of Museum Spotting. Please sit tight, and I'll be right back. I'm over here at the Aerospace Museum of California in uh, Northern California, McClellan, California, and we're going to take a look at this FedEx 727. Boeing made the 727 as a cargo and passenger aircraft from 1962 until 1984, and at the time it was designed to compete against the Super Constellation in the 707. Uh, the 727, uh, as you can see here, has three engines and is Boeing's only three-engine aircraft. It was very popular for airlines and uh, operators at the time because it was so capable and it could fly out of short runways um, where other aircraft couldn't. So let's come around to the back here and I'll show you what the, uh, the engines look like. So the 727 was powered by uh, three Pratt & Whitney low bypass engines. And in fact, the engines are pretty small. The engines are only about this big. That uh, third engine is ducted to the engine that sits about right there. Uh, so it, it, the airflow follows this F S curve that goes down into the engine. If we come around here, we'll see the air stairs as well. And they're built into the aircraft, so you don't need a set of exterior stairs to get out. I love the look at the rear of this aircraft. Those three engines are just so unique, and you don't see them anymore. Absolutely beautiful. We'll come closer uh, to the air stairs here, see if we can take a peek up into the aircraft. Very cool. The 727 engines were known to be uh, extremely noisy. Uh, so a lot of them have hush kits installed, which is uh, what's, what's sitting at the end of these uh, engines here. Beautiful thing. Take a look at the landing gear. These might be just a little bigger than your truck tires. I know FedEx donated a lot of old 727s once they retired that, that fleet. They no donated them to colleges and schools around the country. And I wonder if that's how this 727 ended up here. I've seen a couple on various uh, at various airports around the country, and uh, a lot of them were used as maintenance trainers and uh, maintenance aircraft. That There's the primary cargo door that folds up out of the fuselage. And let's uh, see if we can hop inside and take a look. There's a really cool video online um, showing a 727 landing at Meigs Field in Chicago. Uh, they were able to land this aircraft in just about 2,000 feet, uh, which is incredible to think about. Here's a good shot of the, the rear of the aircraft and the rest of the museum. All right, let's take a peek inside at the cockpit. Take a look at that. That's gorgeous. I don't see a bit of glass in that cockpit. 100% steam gauge, 100% vintage. And of course you have the flight engineer station right here. Again, something you don't see anymore. And then uh, a jump seat. Pretty amazing. Now let's take a look at the back of the aircraft. This is gonna be the cargo hold. Now, I believe these are extra jump seats, um, and that's uh, the crew crew cargo uh, net right there where you, the crew can put their bags and check bags. We'll keep walking back here. If anyone knows if those were actual jump seats, if they really kept them uh, right back there, uh, please let me know in the comments below. I am curious if, those, uh, if that's what it looked like back then. And this here is the uh, rear door. There we go. Let it adjust my exposure. All right. 
So a lot of these cargo planes um, cover what's not necessary. So the side windows, the side door, or the, rather the passenger doors, um, they're not necessary, so they keep them covered. And over here, the museum cut out part of that uh, structure so we can look out the window. And there's the wing and the rest of the museum. It really is a cool museum. If you guys are in uh, Northern California, the Aerospace Museum here is definitely worth a visit. All right, well, that is pretty much it with the 727. Thanks for joining me, as always, and uh, we'll see you next time.